you think that, that, that uh, this massive loss in government trust, is this why we're seeing a, a really strong polarisation of desire to have business and other institutions regulated by government? Yeah, look, I think in the global financial crisis, 2008-2009, we saw that business had lost the license to lead. Mm. Um, you know, the fair market system, the free trade system was um, not seen to be working. Business was taking too many risks, mm. and um, there was certainly a strong call, um, call for regulation. Um, I think the, um, and I think that's, that still exists. In fact, funnily enough, um, perhaps one of the most regulated markets in the world is Singapore, where I'm sitting today. Yeah. And um, Singapore, um, there is very little desire for more regulation. Mm. So, um, and very high in, trust of government in Singapore too, yeah? Yeah, very high trust in government in Singapore. Um, one of the most trusted institutions in the world. Yeah, I mean, it just shows, I, I think, how important, how important trust levels are. Are and, and in fact, how Singapore government, which pay attention to this study very intensely, um, treat it too. Okay, uh, Bob, we saw a, an increase in trust in China. It looks like the, the, the government of state owned businesses and automotive doing well in China. What about the other corporations in China and, and, and indeed across Asia? How are they doing? Um, Around the world, we see that technology is the most trusted industry, regardless of market. Um, technology ranks number one out of all industries um, and has done every year we've done the study. And we put that down to the fact that the technology industry is not seen to be a, um, one of the fundamental causes for key issues such as environmental damage or uh, poverty or um, uh, poor education or health or what have you. In fact, if anything, it seems to be an alleviator of those issues. Right. So the stakeholders' day-to-day -day experience generally is enhanced by their experience um, of technology. Even if you know some things go wrong every now and again, our lives get better and more convenient as a result of technology. Um, and um, they seem to be largely as visionary and enabling us to do more more things better. Mm -hmm. So um, so they always seem to rank top of the park. I do think there will be future question marks around issues such as privacy and um, security, yeah. and that may be a challenge for technology, the technology industry. It's mm -hmm. certainly um, a challenge which is being addressed in some markets in Asia Pacific. Certainly, where you are, it's um, it's a hot topic, yeah. and in Australia and um, in Europe and and in North America, it's a hot topic. So yeah. it'd be interesting, interesting to see how that plays out. Um, on the converse side, um, the industries which um, unsurprisingly, perhaps, sort of fear, fear less well are uh, the financial services industries. And they haven't recovered from the um, trust erosion post the global financial crisis. Mm -hmm. um, the, on the converse of that, however, is the fact that the banking community in Asia Pacific, including in China, um, still remains actually quite trusted. If you recall, back in the late 1990s, 1997, Asia had its own financial crisis. Yeah. And as a result of that, most markets within the region um, addressed that by regulating the banking community. And therefore, the banking community in Asia Pacific was largely protected from the issues that caused the global financial crisis. And as a result, they're still, still seen as trust havens within our region, which is Fascinating in comparison to Europe and uh, North America, mm -hmm. and even Latin. People in the communication function, what advice ought they be giving their CEOs? What direction ought they be leading uh, their businesses? Now, that's a, that's a big question across the region. It probably differs from Japan to China to uh, Singapore. No, I think there's a couple of things. Um, one is that the channels of communication... Um, are becoming more and more um, confused and playing off each other. So whilst traditional media in Asia Pacific is still seen as the most trusted channel of communication for corporates or about corporates, yeah. um, the biggest increase was unsurprisingly social media. Um, but the difference between social media, corporates' own media channels such as their websites, um, hybrid media which is this cross between um, an, a traditional news um, outlet and maybe an online source, so something like BBC.com would count as hybrid me media, 
or the Huffington Post would count as hybrid media, media okay. um, and um, and traditional media. The difference between all those four types of channels of, of information is diminishing, and um, therefore, no single channel is suitable as a standalone communications um, um, source for communicators to be relying on. They've got to communicate across multiple channels, mm -hmm. and not only that, they've also got to be able to communicate multiple times. In fact, three to five times for any message to be believed. Mm -hmm. um, but above and beyond the channels of communication and the amount of times that people need to be able to communicate, um, we asked the stakeholders around the world, general population as well as informed um, publics, mm -hmm. what are the key criteria that you expect business to do well at mm -hmm. to be trusted? Mm -hmm. And at the top of the list, um, across most markets, comes the good news for business is that things like um, quality of product or service still rank highly. Yep. But alongside that are things like listens to customers, um, eh, uh, behaves ethically or transparently, mm -hmm. um, and um, also certain elements of commitment to the local community. Mm -hmm. um, it, especially the environment. So um, we saw this year a very strong divide between what are the traditional operational factors that have driven corporate success and trust in corporate, such as um, return return to investors, treats employees well, um, delivers great product, um, and that is now mixed with more societal criteria that determine trust and those being um, issues of ethics and customer engagement and um, reacting to ish customer issues, etc., etc., um, as well as commitment to the community. So, um, so I think what this means is um, that corporates need to be thinking beyond communicating just about their core products and services and just about their financial results. They really need to be thinking about what is it that determines their trust levels. Mm. And that varies as you say by market. Mm. And how they are how they are really mapping out against those. You know, in the engine room of m many of these corporations you have access to CEOs and to senior corporate communicators. How how do you think they're doing? The traditional areas that business is always oper operates around, I think business is naturally got quite good at but they're not very good at the things which are perhaps more to do with the software of the business, and I don't mean software as in a program, but um, the hardware around business and how it relates with its customers, how it relates with, the, with society. And, um, and they don't even know how to measure that in most cases. Mm. So when I'm out talking to companies, um, we talk about this topic a lot, and, um, and it's certainly beginning to be on the agenda of um, CEOs, especially this issue around um, um, treating employees well, um, because talent is in such high demand and short supply. Mm. So that's become a very key concern for um, corporations. And whether some of these other factors, like how proactively transparent they are, their commitment to the community, whether that actually helps them solve the talent problem. Mm. Bob, what about the dimension of effort that corporations are putting into the different communication functions, whether government affairs uh, and, and regulatory stuff, uh, media relations, social media, employee communications? How is that mapping out? Are you seeing that corporations are putting the right amount of focus in the right areas? Or would you like to see something different? Um, yeah, I think there's there's two questions in one there really. I think one is the type of communications they're doing in terms of um, government affairs and perhaps CSR related work and what have you, compared to their just communicating about their core business. And um, and I think really they're still, um, especially in our region, and Australia stands alone in this. Um, perhaps Australia, Japan stand alone in this. Um, in our region, I think they're still. Um, um, an evolution of the role of business from being very much, if you look at many multinationals in Asia Pacific, um, traditionally it's been, not been that hard to do well in Asia Pacific. It's, you know, you came here, you had a great brand, you made your brand known, and 
people would want to buy your brand because um, it was innovative um, American or European products. Um, and these companies became good in Asia at managing their distribution channels and marketing their products, but not really having to do an awful lot else to be successful. Over the last 10 years, I think that landscape has changed significantly, where they're under a lot more pressure now to actually also commit to their local communities. Mm. I think they're also under pressure from local competition. You look at the pharmaceutical industry, for example, mm. and the whole issue around generics um, puts an awful lot of pressure on pharmaceuticals in Asia Pacific. Mm. And um, therefore, I think companies have got to do more than they are doing. Mm. to build strong relationships with governments, build strong relationships with the NGO community. Um, certainly, I don't think that really has got through today um, yet. Um, some companies, of course, um, have begun and are beginning to do quite well, but I don't think they res resource that enough. On the other side is, are they um, communicating through the right channels? You know, Are they mixing social media and traditional media, etc.? Well, um, I, think, um, I think it's coming. I think there's a lot of stuff in social media which is innovative and cool, um, which companies are experimenting with and they're beginning to be able to see that they can also measure through social media in a way which they've never been able to measure before. Mm. Um, however, I think it's still largely experimentation as opposed to being central to the communication strategy that people, um, that companies are working on. Mm. So I don't really see traditional and social as being the issue. I think the, the landscape has already changed, so yeah. people shouldn't be differentiating them. Any idea that they want to communicate about needs to be able to play across all channels. Do you see leakage from one industry to another, either in a positive or a negative way? Or is it, you know, banking and finance have a, a struggling with reputation or with trust and that just stays contained in that industry? Because you measure across the four institutions and business is sort of one lump. To what extent is it one lump or uh, versus the stovepipes of the particular sectors? Yeah, um, I, I think I, I think that that varies from year to year, depending on um, maybe what the state of you know a lot of levels of trust are driven by the state of the economies, although not solely driven by the state of the economies. So when it's good times and we're all um, doing well, business generally does better. Mm. Um, and when it's bad times, um, business generally does poorly. Um, but if you look at the differential globally between technology and trust levels in business overall, technology is somewhere in the 70% range as a trusted industry, yet business overall globally is at 47%. So that's a massive difference. Yeah. So, um, so I think the... Um, um, I think there are some lessons for companies. Look at some of the things that technology companies are doing. You know, maybe financial institutions should be thinking about how they should talk about their technology, which they, which they all use and invest in significantly, enabling people to manage their finance securely and safely. Maybe that should be their, their core to their message um, because that area seems to actually um, be much more trusted than just talking about you know, returns from savings or something like that. Bob, what's your advice to CEOs? If a CEO, you're meeting with a CEO and trust is down a little bit, is there anything you can you can tell them that can help uh, lift, you know, gain trust a little more quickly, get some quick, easy runs on the board? Um, I think if there's one thing that stands out to me, it's that two-way engagement with their customers is critically important and they need to make that meaningful. So stop talking at your consumers, listen to them, get them engaged and get them to help co-create your future. Hey, thanks, Bob. Thanks, Ed. Nice to speak with you again. You too.